Every year, teams have to design a robot depending on the new missions, and your final design is influenced by many factors, so here is a full FLL robot design process. The first thing you have to think about are the locations of each mission and the general layout of the mat in order to decide the size of your robot. If there is a lot of open space and a robot is able to drive against the walls to reach the other side of the table, you may be able to build a larger robot. However, if there is a lot of tight spaces where your robot may have to maneuver through in order to reach certain missions, you must consider building a smaller robot. After deciding on the size, you will then have to choose what robot kit your team will use. The three most commonly used robotics kits are the LEGO Mindstorms EV3 set, the LEGO Mindstorms NXT set, and the newly released Spike Prime set. Your decision will obviously be affected by the price of each kit as well as their availability. But in general, if you are looking to have a very small compact robot, then the new Spike Prime set is a great choice. When you have settled on a LEGO set, you will then need to choose what wheels to use. Larger wheels will allow your robot to drive faster, but they will be less accurate than smaller wheels because they will increase the play LEGO motors have. However, no matter what wheels you choose, I recommend only using thin wheels so your robot doesn't have unnecessary space. Next, you will have to decide the positions of each motor. Where you put your large motors are not so important as long as they still keep the robot compact. What is more important is where you put your medium motors, or whatever motors you plan to use to power your attachments. FLO missions are pretty balanced in terms of their height, so there will always be an even distribution of missions closer to the floor while others are higher up. So if you plan to put your motors in a lower position, then you may have to build upwards to reach those taller missions, and the same thing applies for missions on the ground if you place your motors higher up. Your decisions will also be affected by the type of universal mount you use, which is something I highly recommend building. Universal mounts will save you a lot of time switching attachments, so in general you should place your motors in the most convenient location where they can still provide power into a flat mount. The last components of your robot are the sensors. In my opinion, the most useful sensors are the color and gyro sensors, which allow the robot to follow black lines and drive straight. These sensors won't affect the design of your robot greatly, so I will go more in depth about their ideal positions in another video. The last thing you will have to do is to choose the outside shape of your robot. If you have enough pieces, I highly recommend a boxy design where all sides of your robot are flat. This will allow you to align against the walls of the mat and also allow you to easily build attachments that slip over the frame of your robot. However, if you are limited in pieces, then you should at least have a flat back so your robot can square up against the walls. In the end, no design will automatically guarantee success. It all just depends on your team's skill level and game strategy.